is that we'll be looking at the crude oil specification. Um, and the highlighted part is the only part you need to know. Uh, we looked at complete combustion in we looked at complete combustion in the previous video, so we'll look today at incomplete combustion. In the previous video, you looked at you looked at complete combustion of hydrocarbons. In this video, we'll look at incomplete. So in our complete combustion reaction, there was sufficient oxygen to oxid to fully oxidize our carbon to carbon dioxide. Um, now, the hydrogen is always oxidized to water in every single case. Now, if there's even less oxygen, oh, let's balance this. If there's even less oxygen, so there's only one oxygen molecule, then your your carbon won't um, won't be oxidized uh, or won't be fully oxidized. Um, if there's even less oxygen, so that's bad. If there's even less oxygen, let's say there's half an oxygen molecule, then your carbon would be your carbon in your hydrocarbon or your fuel will be even less oxidized. Now these two bottom equations now, these these are examples of incomplete combustion. Now in reality we get a mixture of all three carbon-based products in reality. In a GCSC example though it probably only ask you for one of the products and, will, and may ask you to balance it and will ask you to balance it as well if it's chemical, if there's a chemical equation. Um, now, carbon monoxide, as you already know, is poisonous and that produces, no, sorry, that reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So it reduces the oxygen carrying, my handwriting's terrible here, sorry, I do apologise, carrying the capacity of the blood, of the blood. Okay, your carbon particulates, this, this, the more carbon particulates there are, the more yellow your flame is. Probably also worth noting that you can't, you you can't, um, you you always your hydrogen is always fully oxidized. If it's not fully oxidized, you get hydrogen, and hydrogen is flammable. So if you've got hydrogen here, it will react straight away to form water anyway. Now let's do an example for propane. Now, now if you react it with oxygen, um, let's say your question asked you to look uh, to write the equation. Um, and with the formation of carbon monoxide, um, the combustion of propane um, forming carbon monoxide. Now you'll just write this equation out here now and then you'll balance it. And as we said in the last video, always balance the carbons first, um, then the hydrogens, um, and then the oxygens afterwards. They're always easier to balance. We've got four, seven there, so we're gonna have three and a half. Now what about if the equation asked you, uh, asked, asked, asked you, um, instead of carbon monoxide forming, it asked for you to write it with uh, sorry carbon forming. I uh, don't know why I put a C there. With carbon forming instead, you do the exact same, and then again you just balance it um, using uh, C first, then H, then H, um, and then O again. So that is actually the same here. Um, I think you just have one less O. So you've got four O's. That would be so just two. Perfect. Have a go at writing out your own balanced chemical equations just on a rough sheet of paper, um, and you're going to write write ba balanced incomplete combustion equations for the formation of carbon monoxide, and then write a separate one for the for carbon. Okay, and the same with both. You can pause now. Okay, let's see how quick I can do this. So we have ethane, which is C2H6 plus our O2, and that forms carbon monoxide, and it's also going to form carbon plus water I do apologize for my handwriting you know you know what um, you can surely understand it um, anyway but you have two carbons on this side and now you just need to balance it two carbons on this side then three here then you've got five oxygens there so you have two and a half here and remember because this is a symmetrical molecule you, because oxygen is a symmetrical molecule you can't split it in half um, same again for your second one you have two carbons on the left hand side two carbons on the right hand side um, and then you have uh, three, you're going to need three hydrogens there again. Um, and then you've just got less, even less oxygens. You have three this time, so you have one and a half oxygens here. Let's go for pentane. So we've got C5H, uh, is it 12? Uh, C5H12 plus our O2. That reacts to form CO plus H2O. We can probably just write that out again, right? Um, O2 
C plus H2O. Let's just balance them both at the same time. That might be quicker. So we have five carbons here. So we're going to also have five carbons here. Um, we have 12 hydrogens there. So we're going to have six there, six there as well. Now we just need to change how many oxygens we have. Okay. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have five and a half. And then on this side, we're going to have three. Okay. Okay, here's the second part of the specification which you need to know. We've already looked at the first um, the first point, 4.13, which is um, about carbon monoxide and why it's poisonous. That's because it reduces the capacity of the blood cells to carry oxygen. Okay, there are two environmental problems you need to know related to the combustion of crude oil. Um, and one is, and they're both related to the products that are formed, and one product is carbon dioxide, as you know, that is a greenhouse gas, and that contributes to the greenhouse effect. So that means that as the sun warms up the, as the sun warms up the earth, um, the, the earth is warmed up and, and, and radiates heat, and that heat can't escape, it's, so it's trapped in the atmosphere by these um, greenhouse gases. Um, the other problem you need to know is um, is, is sulfur. Sulfur is found is is found in crude oil. It's found in crude oil, and when crude oil combusts um, or, or oxidizes, your sulfur also combusts um, and is also oxidized um, to form sulfur dioxide. Now that is a gas. Now when that's released, it, it enters our atmosphere and it reacts with the water in our atmosphere and that forms an acid and that is um is it h sorry h2 it forms sulfurous acid okay sulfurous acid if there was enough oxygen it would form um, sulfuric acid um, but it forms sulfurous um, acid there um, and you, you don't really need to know this equation you just need to know that sulfur dioxide reacts with water to form an acid and that is that acid here is acid rain and that can damage um, the environment wildlife um, statues buildings and that type of stuff I won't write it actually but wildlife statues and buildings are good enough Okay, so give yourself three minutes to answer these past paper questions because there's three marks. You may pause now. Okay, so your identify your acid from sulfur dioxide. When sulfur dioxide reacts with water, it is sulfurous acid. If you're stuck on this, you could remember that the the, the balanced chemical equation is already balanced. Um, if you remember that, sulfuric uh, sulfur dioxide plus water reacts to form your sulfurous sorry acid that's h2so3 already balanced um that could help you um remember if you just rearrange your reactants um state so two problems caused by acid rain um and that is um, these here it corrodes metal um it says here ignore physical processes that's very important such as erosion or weathering or dissolving or burns away any of those physical processes it doesn't allow because um, acid rain is um, its effect is chemical it's a chemical process which is, is, is the devastating effect which which, which um, damages our environment so your limestone mar marble corrodes it's not just buildings okay there are some buildings which are um, corrosion resistant they don't react and as you can remember your calcium your limestone is made up from calcium carbonate so when it reacts with an acid it forms your salt carbon dioxide and water and the carbon dioxide uh, leaves and that's what causes the erosion um the other marks could be you could have any of these as well for the other marks so it damages plants trees vegetations or fish aquatic or animals anything um or aquatic animals ignore references to just animals so it doesn't really affect us per se because we're not aquatic animals you have to say fish aquatic life anything like that okay the ph is very important to the balance of the ecosystem there okay here are two more questions so give yourself two marks again pause now okay name this gas that's carbon dioxide and it's poisonous because it reduces the capacity of the blood to carry oxygen now we've gone through um, we've gone through these now. You should feel quite comfortable, but if you don't, um, please do just go again through the, go back again through the video or go through your book um, or go through the past paper questions. We're going to look now at cracking.